What does HBO's Game of Thrones have to do with the political ideas of pluralism, hyperpluralism, and elite class theory? Well, let's take a look at the many houses of Westeros. Much like American special interests, they range in size, power, and financial means, but they all want one thing, control of the Iron Throne. This is a situation of hyperpluralism, a state in which many groups or factions are so strong that a government is unable to function. In Westeros, there are over a hundred noble houses, like House Tully, Reed, Aaron, Hightower, Greyjoy, and many others that are not only warring with each other, but have formed a network of allies that make political decisions very complicated. However, the real competition is between four of the great houses, Baratheon, Lannister, Targaryen, and Stark. These houses have the most support thanks to their allegiances with other, less powerful houses. Much like pluralism, this is a system in which two or more main states or factions coexist. And although the great houses may be the most powerful, not everyone within them is equal. The power dynamic in Game of Thrones can be described by the elite class theory, a small minority consisting of members of the economic, elite, and ruling families that holds the most power. In Game of Thrones, this would be Rob Stark, who has a wide variety of allies in the North, Tywin Lannister, the richest man in Westeros and his children, Joffrey Baratheon, the current king, and Daenerys Targaryen, who recently won the loyalty of the Unsullied Army. So in the end, there's the hyper-pluralist noble houses of Frey, Mormont, Blackwood, Manderley, Westerling, Dane, Martell, Umber, and a hundred others, the pluralist great houses Stark, Targaryen, Lannister, and Baratheon, and the elite minority of King Rob, Lord Tywin, King Joffrey, and Daenerys Stormborn. And they're all from The Game of Thrones.